everyone in this video we will understand the relation between accumulation factor and force of interest as a function of time t so in the previous video we already learned that uh, force of interest as a function of time t can be expressed as delta of t which we had seen it is nothing but uh, derivative of accumulation factor sorry accumulation value at time t divided by accumulation value at time t now we know that uh, we know that derivative of natural logarithm of a of t will be if I differentiate the natural logarithm of a of t, it will be 1 by a of t and then multiplied by a prime of t, means first derivative of uh, d. So I can express this as d by dt. I will say since we know. This is actually the uh, using the chain base rule, uh, chain rule, not chain base, chain rule of uh, differentiation. This I wrote it. So this is natural logarithm of A of T. Now we have this. Let me call this as equation one. Now integrating. one with respect to dt on both sides. What do we get? We get integral uh, delta of t dt is equal to integral of uh, d by dt of natural logarithm of a of t with respect to dt. Uh, with respect to dt on both sides with the limits t1 to t2. So, I am going to do a definite integral. So, let me put t1, t2, t1, t2. Okay. Now, what happens? This will become integral t1 to t2 delta t dt is equal to. Derivative of an integral will become, uh, I mean, derivative of a function's integration will become that function itself. So I can write this as natural logarithm of A of t. Then the limiting values are t1 and t2. So this will become now natural logarithm of A of t2, substituting the limiting values, A of t1. Now, this is like a log A minus log B, which can be written as log of natural logarithm of A by B. What is this? This is actually accumulation value at time t2 divided by accumulation value at time t1 which is nothing but accumulation factor which can be written as a of t1 t2 this is what this is actually accumulation factor so we have the relationship now now 
natural logarithm of this accumulation factor is this integral. So if I want only accumulation factor, I can write it in the form of an exponent is equal to e to the power of integral t1 to t2 delta of t dt. So that is the relation between accumulation factor from time t1 to t2. So this is nothing but accumulation factor from t1 to t2. That is the left hand side. Right hand side is same thing. e to the power of t1 to t2 delta of t dt. Now, this is accumulation factor. That means our uh, discount factor. Discount factor from T1 to T2 will be the reciprocal of this. So I can simply write it as e to the power of minus of T1 to T2 delta of T I am just taking the reciprocal of this expression. So I can write this as V of T1 because it is discount factor. Now, if delta of T is a constant, let us say delta, a constant, then your Accumulation factor A of T1, comma T2 will be what? This one, this delta of T will become simply delta. So it is e to the power of integral T1 to T2 delta TT. And since delta is a constant, I can take it outside the integral. which integral of dt is t only and then if you, if you substitute the limiting values it will become e to the power of delta t2 minus t1 where t2 minus t1 is our time period right <clears throat> so whatever is the time period that we will get it if it is a constant, right? So that's about this particular video. In case if you find the contents of this video to be useful to you, I request you to please like it, share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you.